Tosmasatiwi has done marvelous trainings in when where around 300 new members, the new club officers were sharp to their roots. She is the warmest, most approachable person I have come across, an accomplished speaker and an engaging presenter. This all will come our resident Toastmaster Tiwi Arkosos. Good evening. Good evening. A day full of technical nuances. Okay, great. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Okay. So the last couple of meetings that I've attended have been all about what? That is the moments of truth. Okay, so where we take feedback and go through how the members are feeling and what is whatever the feedback about it. And every mod that I attended, I saw one thing, like one quote which was put in all the mods, that you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Right? So that got me to thinking about first impressions. What do we do to make a first impression? Tell me, how do you make a first impression? I mean, having a smile like you. Perfect, mm -hmm. having a smile, being punctual, being well punctual, being well dressed, exactly. Yes, Ms. Reed. Preparation. Preparation. So I have a small game for you all. Okay, I'll give you five minutes. Time of this time, five minutes. And I want you to meet as many members as possible. And with the paper and pen, write down what is your first impression about the person. For example, Kushbu will say Rashid dressed well, has a smile. So I want you all to give me five first impressions of minimum five people. One first impression of five people. Sounds good? Okay. So let's start now. Just walk around. Walk, mingle with people, talk to them. It can be positive impression. Please let it be only positive. It should be positive, encouraging words or adjectives. So the timer will start the time now. Your five minutes start now. Just go around, mix and mingle. Thank you. 
Okay, now with the technical nuances, I forgot that I have to open the meeting. So the power rested in me. I now declare this meeting open. Okay, so let me just call randomly a few people and ask them to tell us what first impressions they got. Let me start with Toastmaster Siraj. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Sunny, do you want to the mic? Yeah, I got uh, is ranging from leadership development to presentation mastery to engaging humor to motivational strategies. What is the core competencies of these? Of course, it's public speaking, interpersonal communication, management, confidence, and leadership. So this is how it works. DTC is your Dubai Toastmasters Club of the Year. I'm the president of the Dubai Toastmasters Club. A couple of clubs make an area. We belong to Area 20. And our Area 20 director is Toastmaster Feroz Abdullah. Couple of areas together make a division. We belong to Division B. And our division director is Distinguished Toastmaster Premier. Couple of divisions together make the district. And our district director is Distinguished Toastmaster Rania. Couple of divisions, couple of districts make the region. We have Distinguished Toastmaster Shabazz Ali Shah as our Region 11 director. And the international president, Distinguished Toastmaster Richard Peck. 
This is the XCOM of the By Those Masters Club. We call ourselves the Visionary Rockstars. And that's me, the president, by Toastmaster Nisha, sitting over there, who's the VP Education. Toastmaster Yumira, who is our membership, is currently on vacation. We have Toastmaster Nisha, our VPPR, sitting there. We have our treasurer, Toastmaster Api, who's right behind over there. Our secretary, Toastmaster Santosh, is again on vacation. And our sergeant at arms, you've all seen him, Toastmaster Sari. The Why Toastmasters Club, specifically, it was started on 1st of April 1996. We completed 26 years. This is the first club in Dubai and the second club in UAE. The first in UAE was in Abu Dhabi. So we have a wealth of 26 years experience. We have our stalwarts who are sitting right here amongst us and we have some newbies who have just joined. So we have formal fun meetings. Now we believe in what our founder Dr. Dahl Spendley said that we learn best in moments of enjoyment and you will experience that today. As you can see in all these pictures, we have lots of fun in our meetings, it's learning and fun together. So now let me welcome our new members, okay, to our family members to the TDC family. Let's welcome Toastmaster Nasreen Ali. <laughs> We have distinguished Toastmaster Hari Haranayar. Can you have your stage? <laughs> and we have a sweet Toastmaster Nena on the stage. <laughs> the heart of the White Toastmasters, we warmly welcome you all to the Dubai Toastmasters family. Shoot Master, can you, can you come closer and have a picture? Thank you so much. I would love you to come and say something over here, but in the interest of time, we'll keep it for some other time or later. Now, let me just invite few guests to speak about, tell, tell us what your name is, what your profession is, and how did you know about this meeting, and what do you expect from this meeting? Let's start with you. Hello, good evening everyone. My name is Amina and uh, I'm a communication engineer. I work for substations, the field, the field of substations. Uh, how did I come to know? It's uh, my uncle. Uh, he's the one who motivated me to join Toastmasters. So it's been like two years at time, but it was offline. So he said, no, it's better you should go, sorry, online, better go offline so you can meet people. And, uh, my expectations is that to improve my communication skills, get to know people, and self-development, growth. So it's nice to know. Thank you so much. I love you. Thank you. Hi, thank you for having me. My name is Razami and uh, I am a uh, from Australia in the industry to be specific. I'm running a restaurant group of restaurants in fact. And uh, how do I just uh, know about uh, Toastmasters? Actually, this is my first session for any class and I just came to know about the Toastmaster from Vita. And uh, I really want to like interact with the people, uh, know people, just my story to the their stories, that's all. Thank you. Thank you and welcome. Hi everyone. So uh, I happen to speak to a couple of people. So just give my quick introduction. So my name is Kushpu and uh, I'm from India. And uh, so basically I'm working as a German language trainer. But uh, I started working as a strategic partnership trainer for WWF. So it's a local environmental organization. We are working for impact and digital developing environment. So this is what I do. And for me, I always enjoy speaking, interacting with people. This is something like I enjoy it. And uh, I so one of my mentors uh, asked me that 
why didn't you join that, you know, uh, these Toastmaster Club, because it really enhances your confidence, your speaking skills, and at the end of the day, you also uh, improve your leadership skills. So this is what I was looking into, and it totally aligns with what I was looking for. So I'm very excited to be here. Thank you. Welcome to the White House. Now let me quickly acknowledge some distinguished guests, some distinguished Toastmasters that we have over here. Let's start with distinguished Toastmaster Colonel Murad, <laughs> distinguished Toastmaster VP Menon, our past president Sandeep Adani, past president Bosco, distinguished Toastmaster Hari Haran Ayer. The room is spread out today. I have to really look out. Yes, I think I have covered all that. Now, with no, without further ado, let's begin with the session. Now, every meeting has a Toastmaster of the Day. So, Toastmaster of the Day is your host, your genial host, who will take you throughout the entire proceedings of the meeting. Now, today we have someone who always gets the entire XCOM of the afternoon. Last year, when he was the Toastmaster of the Day, he traveled just two days before the meeting. And he was supposed to come the same day, and he was like, oh my god, is he going to come, is he going to be there? But he came and he conducted one of the best meetings. Same, history repeats again, the same thing happened today. I mean, this time, my VPPR and the VP Education were practically messaging, saying that he's not responding, he's traveling, what do we do? I was like, don't worry, I've experienced that last year, and this year is no different. He arrived this morning today, and he's all set to take us through a gala evening today. So put your hands together for our Toastmaster of the day, who has been a Toastmaster for 11 years, he's the past president of the Dubai Toastmasters Club, past area director, mentor and counselor of Ace Gavel Club for the last 10 years, he's a freight forwarder by profession and a recruiter as well, running two organizations, he believes in one mantra, YOLO. You live, you only live once, so make the most of your time in this space and on this planet. Put your hands together for Toastmasters and we were learning. Thank you, Toastmaster Devi, for the wonderful introduction. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Am I audible right till the end? Yeah. Okay, brilliant. So, the theme of today is money, and I've not left it very generic. I've asked the question. How much of money is actually enough? Right, so let's start figuring out the question first. Who of you think money is important? And let's be very, very open, very candid. Right, most of us feel money is important, right? So on a scale of one to 10, if you were to mark how important money is, throw a number, I think. 11. 10. 11. Eight. I like that answer. 8. Anybody else? 9. Nine, seven, seven. ten, ten, hundred, hundred, <laughs> six, six. Anybody else? So many whatever numbers you have. I still have a few answers left. You want zero? Maybe answer. No, there could be an answer zero as well. Someone could be much more important enough. So done. I will play a short video. If uh, someone can help me with. How much money would you need to live comfortably? A recent study by university psychologists at the UK universities of Bath, Bath Spa, and Exeter asked this question to 8,000 people in 33 countries across six continents. The majority said an ideal life could be achieved with $10 million or less. This research may challenge the notion of people's desire for unlimited wants. With one exception, the American answer, People polled in the U.S. said they would need $100 million for that ideal life, with 31.7% saying that they would prefer to have at least $100 million. This is in stark contrast to more than 50% of participants in Russia, India, and Argentina, who said $1 million or less would allow them to live comfortably. It raises questions about wealth ideals in relation to different countries. Researchers are finding that, quote, People who wanted more or unlimited amounts tended to be younger, city-dwelling people who valued power, success, and independence. They also tended to live in countries with a greater collective focus 
and acceptance of power differences. This study might provide potential for a more sustainable route towards economic progress. The results suggest that limiting growth and wealth, quote, may actually be more consistent with human ideals and aspiration than is commonly believed. Watch that short video to prove that each country, each person is different. They have a different figure in mind for what or how much money is enough. And I think it's also related to power and success. So I leave you with that thought. On that note, uh, we move on to the first segment of the today, which is the word master. And our word master for today is someone who's been in Dostasa for the last one year. When I asked him his net worth, he said, I wouldn't want to disclose that. I said, what do you do for a living if I give you $100 million in your bank account? What would your day be like? He said, for a living, he would join surfing camp in summer somewhere in St. Sebastian. He would rent a snowboard and school in winter somewhere in Tremonix. I don't know where that is, but it definitely sounds ideal. And his average day would be right in the morning uh, and spend his time in beach bar in the afternoon. Please help me welcome your word master for today, Toastmaster Misha. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and dear guests. <laughs> Thank you, Toastmaster of the day, for introduction. Uh, Chamonix, it's uh, in the France, close to Italian border. Yeah, it's uh, part of uh, Cermat uh, uh, ski resort. Okay, what of the day today? The first I introduce it, I want to ask you something. Any clue? What is it? Any ideas? Hormone plenty. Hormone plenty. Who said first? Congratulations. <laughs> Very good. And the word today, there is a special word for the uh, hormone plenty. It's hernacopia. It consists from two words uh, from Latin language. Uh, the first part is, corn, uh, is about corn, and the second is about uh, plenty or it's about abundance and uh, it sounds like cornacopia in American pronunciation in British it's a bit different I would say right Bob <laughs> and um, also it's called uh, form of plenty it's a symbol of abundance and uh, nourishment and uh, commonly it's a uh, um, container Overflow and did uh, produce flowers or vegetables or fruits uh, or goodies, I don't know. And it came from uh, ancient Greek mythology. Uh, this horn of a god uh, contained food and drink for a baby Zeus when he was hiding uh, in a cave from his father Cronus. So, uh, how we use these uh, samples, how to use this uh, word, Karnakopia? There is a vast carnacopia of choice people can pick and choose. This dish was an extraordinary carnacopia of subjects. Of the solar system contains a carnacopia of small rocky and icy bodies. And uh, may I please ask someone to try how to use this word um, with your example? Any volunteer? Yes, please. I need a uh, carnacopia of luck to get 100 million dollars. Very good, thank you. Applause. Applause. Mm. Anyone else? Stacks on offer in Toastmasters are always a common call for your definitions, please. Perfect, thank you, Toastmasters. <laughs> Anyone? Not, maybe someone from, from guest, maybe. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, there is a canopy of uh, options available while I do online shopping. Very good. <laughs> Especially in Dubai, right? Especially in Dubai. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, we have a cornucopia of uh, people attending tonight. Very good. Thank you so much. I encourage you to use this word of the day, cornucopia, as many times as you can. And uh, over to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you.
Thank you, Gordon Master today, for the wonderful work. Um, we're going to try and ask a, a little more intriguing question. So, how do you make more money? Anyone? Ideas of making more money? Sorry? Bank robbery. Bank robbery? <laughs> the shortest and probably not the easiest way, but take a loan. Take a loan? Investments. Making money, not taking money. All right. Self-professional services. Self-professional services. By becoming more skillful. Like. By becoming more skillful. Okay. One last answer. Smart Printing money. Yeah. Sorry? Smart investments. Smart investments is very ideal. Hurry. Become spiritual data. Become a spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think also the shortest and easiest way to do it. Creating new businesses. Yeah. All right, done. Now let's try and uh, shuffle things a little bit. I want you to guys go as one, two, three, four. So I will start with you, say one, then you say two, then you say three, then you say four, and we go like that. All right, so if you can shout out your number. One. Okay. Two. All right. All right, ma'am. Four. Okay. One. Yep. Two. Three. Okay. Four. Okay. One. Two. Three. Four. One. Okay, Three. Four. Oh, five. One. Oh, one. Alright, ma'am? Two. Alright. Three. Alright. Four. One. One. Two. Three. Three. Four. Four. Sale. One. Two. Three. Alright. You got four. One. One. And one. These guys will help me do the rest. Alright. So I want all the ones to come together, the twos to come together. So one, two, three, and four. I'll repeat all the ones. All the twos, all the threes, all the fours. All the ones, all the twos, all the threes, all the fours. Yes. One, two, two, three, and four. Two, 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 this way. two, 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 Two hours. This is your group. Identify within yourselves. We're going to be having different activities where you'll be given points, and we'll eventually have a winner at the end. Fair? Okay. It's best if you guys sit together this is my because then it becomes easier for you guys to communicate during the meeting. Are we clear? So we'll have four or five different activities on which you'll be given points. The points will be tallied and allocated by DV and Nisha, right? And then in the end, we'll have a team winner. Fair enough, you guys need to work as a team for all of it. Yeah. Fair? So I think I would suggest shuffle around and sit next to each other. Right? You can now go back to your seats or choose to shuffle around. No, I don't have to yeah, but it's in my eyes. I don't know. 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 Number three. French 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 is incorrect. Switch Frank? Switch Frank is very good. All right, we got two more. This is listening. Sorry, Korean one is correct. All right, so that means they are seen by the credit and the last activity for all of you is discuss amongst yourself and come up with a currency of your own. Right? Can discuss during the course of the meeting. You have you can discuss it during the break or whatever. This is the last, absolute last activity that we will have at the end of the game. Is one of you will choose the team leader and you come up and you represent the group 
and he or she will say, this is the group's currency, give us an explanation 20 seconds as to what it stands for. Right? We have the rules? Brilliant. Now we move on to the speaking segment, which is the core of every Toastmasters meeting, which is the speeches. And we have three wonderful speakers lined up today. Before I call on the first speaker, can I please request his evaluator to kindly pick up the objectives of the topic? So they can go back to their seats? Be comfortable as you are. Well. Is the time money? <laughs> How much time? Yes, yeah, sir, the time money. I'm only showing you that. Right, so can I have the first evaluator to read out the papers? Uh, the first evaluator is VP Menon. VP Menon, right? Mm -hmm. Is it is it Nora or VP? Can you just please confirm with the educator? After the agenda, the first speaker is Toastmaster Mirza. The evaluator is Toastmaster VP Menon. Yeah. The evaluator one is Nora. As for the agenda, it's Mirza is the first speaker and the evaluator is Osmasa Vipi Nal. Osmasa Vipi Nal. Osmasa Vipi Nal. Yeah, yeah. Really? Okay, so Osmasa Vipi Nal, uh, the first evaluator. Okay, so Toastmaster Mirza is doing this uh, presentation mastery level one, project one, um, icebreaker. The title is How I Carried My Name, Intelligence. And the state focus statement for this project is uh, for the member to introduce themselves to the club and learn the basic structure of a public speech. Um, the time is four to six minutes. Thank you, okay. Thank you Toastmaster Weepy. So our first speaker for today is been with Toastmasters for less than a year, and his net worth is less than a billion dollars, and I have to say that, and he said, with, if he gets hundred million dollars, he will work on making that 200 million, and his daily routine will still be the same. He wake up in the morning, do some work, do some work, and one thing that will change is that we'll be doing full-time content creation. With a speech titled, How I Carry My Name Intelligent, please have welcome our first speaker for today, Toastmaster Mirza Danis. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and dear guests. My name is Mirza Danis, and if you are curious to know the meaning of Mirza Danis, can I get any answer? Well, it stands for intelligence. Yes, intelligence. When I was, when I was young, it doesn't mean I'm old now. I mean, when I was a kid, I used to think that I'm smart. I'm intelligent. And the reality strikes when the exams marks were declining year over year. Then I, then I started thinking that I need to protect the meaning of my name, intelligent. And at a very early age, I figured that I'm not enjoying going, going to college. And if I were to be an intelligent person, I must do something else. And I stopped going to college. However, I didn't stop educating myself. I got the opportunity to work in a multinational environment. The biggest, the tallest, the longest, the one and only Dubai. It was 2014 when I landed in Dubai 
and being in a new country, it's not easy. And I realized that two things. Never believe that your life is sorted once you are in a new country. And second, do not think that it's easy money. If you want to live a better life and earn money, you need to work really, really hard. Doesn't matter which country you are living in. Coming back to my story, currently I am working as a retail manager and I am married and occasionally I love cooking, especially Vivian. And the other day, one of my friends told me, look Mehta, if you want to be a really intelligent person, you need to join Toastmaster. I said, Toastmaster? How can, how can a person who's toasting bread can help me to improve my intellect? His response was, Mirza, are you serious? It is a platform where you can develop your communications and leadership skills. I said, okay. You see, from 2014 till 2020, actually the day I born till 2020, I never heard a word called Toastmaster. But here I am today giving my speech in front of the Toastmaster. The moral of the story is if you want to be an intelligent person, never stop learning. I hope today you get something from my story. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Toastmaster Mirza, for the wonderful speech. And since he has completed his P1, can you please give him a standing ovation? And because all the audience, please give him a as well. Congratulations, Toastmaster Mirza, for your first week's step in the public speaking journey. Can we ask everybody to please take 20 seconds and cast your feedback for speaker number one? You have the business with this bad and start with you. Just take your feedback and start with also the amount of creative feedback. Please pass your feedback to speaker number one. Time will please let me know in 30 seconds with that. Thank you. Before I call speaker number two on stage, can you please request the evaluator to read out the objectives? It's an icebreaker. The first statement is uh, for the member to introduce themselves to the club and learn the basic structure of our pocket. Thank you, Toastmaster Nola. Our second speaker for today has been in Toastmasters for less than a year. And he mentioned that if he gets $100 million, he'd better travel to most of the world countries and have his own business. What he would do daily is he would choose something new and he won't think about uh, his debts and his monthly invoices anymore. With the speech title, Identify Your Weakness, please have a welcome our next speaker, Toastmaster Ibrahim Pekabi. Master, Master, of the Master of PBS. Good evening. Uh, today I'm very happy uh, to introduce myself for the first time to the White Coast Master. After a long time of uh, joining the White Coast Master, finally I have controlled my fears and I've been able to stand on the stage and presenting and taking eyes for the first time. My name is Brahmi Kelly. I came from Egypt. Actually, I had a very beautiful, bright, and amazing childhood. I was in the school 
struggle that you can see that yeah. they was very diligent, working very hard, achieving the best mark in my exam. And in my high school, I achieved 95 percent. But I was always suffering from disease. Literally, I call it disease because it taught me to be the best version of myself. I was very really shy. I couldn't communicate better than you know, that I was uh, supposed to do. That has taught me to be the best version of me. But during that time, I was just a student and no need to have the presentation skills or communication skills. But it not, not affected me too much. Until I finalized my bachelor's degree, I will not tell you when I finished, so you will recognize my age. So I finished my bachelor's degree and I started to work in pharmaceutical field as a medical representative in one of multinational pharmaceutical companies as a medical representative. Actually, this job required person and the characters different than me. It need people that they can interact with people, build relations very short time, having a big and good presentation skills, communication skills. So it wasn't a challenge for me. I was an introvert and a unique extrovert person. I succeeded in this job by achieving my uh, financial and uh, sales target. I was one of outstanding performer uh, many groups, but again, my weakness point played a role that role in my career. I couldn't take step forward. I need to be promoted in, in, in the career. I need to take another chance. Wherever, whenever any chance for promotion, I applied for it. They didn't choose none because I have to work more in my presentation skills, in my communication skills. This was one of my biggest weakness point. After I identified these points, I start to find a way to develop this problem. One of my friends told me one day, but you can go to, to Toastmaster. That time I don't know about the Toastmaster, but someone gave me number for Dr. Pasco. <laughs> I told him doctor because it was a disease and I need treatment. I called him, he invited me. Uh, I, need to, I came to the Vitus Master, I saw amazing speakers in the stage, I was just sitting, nothing. Okay, after a few months, I start uh, to give up. I need to not come again, until I receive a call from uh, Post Master now. She advised me to continue with uh, the Post Master, and she already gave me a hope. She's told me you will not regret if you will try again, but you have to work hard on yourself. You have to uh, take it as a, yeah, to be serious. So really, I listened to her. I came again, and uh, today I'm happy here to bring the eyes and uh, to be here in the White House Master. And really, I would like to tell you the best decision I have taken in my life is joining the White House Master, where leaders uh, born and. Uh, Really, I appreciate the chance, I appreciate the opportunity that you have given to me. And I would like to end my, my presentation with a very nice quote, says that all great speakers were bad speakers one day. So thanks so much for having me, thanks for giving me this opportunity, uh, and thanks for your active visit. Thank you, Oscar, for your wonderful speech. Again, another icebreaker, please give us a hand Congratulations to Oscar for your first step in the realm of this evening. 30 seconds for Thank you, Mr. Lerchuk. We now move on to our last speaker for today.
And before we go on our stage, can I please request his evaluator to kindly read out the objectives? Uh, our third speaker is Toastmaster Bosco. He's undergoing the pathway Engage in Humor. This is level four, project one of that. The power of humor in an impromptu speech. Uh, if I may note for the timekeeper, we will actually be making two speeches of two to three minutes each. And uh, Toastmaster of the day will be providing the prompt the first one, and then when it's finished, the second one after that. So the timekeeper will need to reflect that. Um, it will be totally impromptu. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Toastmaster Bob. So just to summarize what was being said, I've got six topics with me, and uh, he will be attending two speeches. Two of those six topics will be attended by him, and each topic will be attended for two or three minutes. So we start off with the first topic. Please, okay, let me start. Before I call the topic and the speaker on stage, uh, Toastmaster Bosco, the past president of my Toastmasters Club, he's been in Toastmasters for six plus years, and when I asked, what we do $100 million, dollars, he said I would be engaging in $100 million dollars worth of experiences. And what would change? He said he would pay all his debts in such a way that his basic needs are met and instead of a trust fund and contribute to the community. Please have me welcome speaker number three, Ghost Master Bosco Master. Thank you, Master So, two speeches. The first topic is you are surprised to be asked to give a short theology for a friend. Postmaster Bosco, you are surprised to be asked to give a short theology for a friend. Good evening, dear Postmasters and uh, guests. Uh, today, we are gathered here uh, to remember my close friend, uh, Henry. Uh, we were very, very close friends since our childhood. Uh, what I can remember is, uh, I always, like when he used to come and meet me, after our visit, uh, when he left, I will tell my parents, I am going to send him off. Okay? And uh, uh, I will send him off till his house. I will go till his house and then we will be chatting in his house for hours and hours together. And when I leave, he will tell uh, his parents, I am going to send my friend off. And he will send me off till my house. And we have done this for two or three days together. I remember you, my friend. And today I am regretting when you left, I was not there. To send you off. Uh, I can only remember one incident uh, when he brought happiness and uh, joy. When, whenever he was around us, it was always happiness and joy. Uh, it was not funny jokes, but even trivial things he made it fun. Uh, for example, uh, I went, uh, he took me to one of his auntie's house and he said, This auntie, whenever we visit her, she will give us horlicks. Okay, not tea, not coffee, she will give us horlicks. And uh, this happens every time I visit her. So he prepared me for that, and then we both of us went inside. Uh, and my auntie made us sit and said, I'll come back in two minutes. And that time he turned at me and he said, All this. Okay. So after two minutes, my auntie came out and she brought her legs. And he looked at me and smiled. I burst out laughing. I could not control my laughter. Uh, and after when I, he saw me laughing, he also started laughing. He just kept laughing and my auntie didn't have a clue why we were laughing. And this went on, went on, and I went out of the room and I started laughing. <laughs> we ended up not drinking the topics. My aunt was, his aunt was very mad at us. And uh, we left that place, uh, leaving the public school. Uh, so uh, he is that kind of a person where he always brought fun and happiness when he was around. 
I miss you, my dear friend, Henry. Thank you, Mr. Professor Bosco. Your second speech title uh, is one of the situation. It's the speaker of an important event is late, and you are invited to open the event and fill a few minutes until the speaker arrives. I'll repeat it once again. The speaker for an important event is late. You are invited to open the event and fill a few minutes until the speaker arrives. Thank you so much, Mr. Bosco. Good evening again, my dear friends. Our Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Sandeep, who was supposed to come to uh, for this meeting, heard, uh, we heard that he is going to arrive a little late. Uh, he said five minutes. So let's see how early he is coming for the meeting. Uh, till that time, I just wanted to uh, share with you one story about coming late. Uh, this happened, uh, this is in my school, okay? In my school, uh, my headmaster room was in the entrance and there was a table uh, next to that headmaster's room. So whenever the school starts, uh, he will be standing there. And whoever comes late, he will ask that person to go and stand on top of the table. And that table was called Andaman. The reason that was called Andaman was uh, you all must be knowing that Andaman is island where the prisoners are sent from India. So, uh, whenever that is a punishment island, okay? So, when someone comes late, he will say, Go to Andaman. And that person has to go there, stand on the table, and whoever passing by will look at that person. So, this is uh, one incident that I remember. Uh, the second incident is in my village. Uh, we had a priest who is coming late for service every time. So, uh, in the uh, community, there is a, a practice. So, uh, there is a, the, the church bell uh, has a different sound for different occasions. So, when the uh, ceremonies like marriages and all happen, the bell sound is different. And when the something like a death happens, the bell sound is different. So our villagers got a little bit upset about the priest. And one day when the priest came, uh, like didn't turn up, they went to the church and rang the death bell. And the entire village came and wanted to find, find out who died. Uh, they said the priest died, but the priest came running. He also came to ask who died, and everyone said you died. All right, so rule number one, two, three, and four. Are you ready for the activity? Yes. All right, so I want the first one who comes up to me with either a note from the following countries. Oman, Qatar, Bahrain, or Kuwait. Oman, Qatar, Bahrain, or Kuwait, if you have a note in your wallet for any of these countries, only one. Oman, Qatar, Kuwait, Bahrain. Can we follow that No, 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 don't follow the word. <laughs> All right, done. All right, fine. Then let's move on to the next one. The first group that brings me 2,000 dirhams. Refundable at the same time. The first group that brings me 2,000 dirhams, refundable at the same time. You need to walk up on stage and give me 2,000 dirhams back. David, I have this team wins. Thank you, three hundred at the same time. All right, Ghostmaster Misha Didi, please make note of that. And a small giveaway. <laughs> Brilliant. On that note, we head on to a short break. Uh, it's break time, and we look forward to the five star snacks, uh, which Ghostmaster started mentioned a few minutes ago. And we'll join you back exactly in the next seven minutes.
So please take a break and see you guys shortly. Thank you. I think the break time is a good time to discuss that. So please discuss our group's currency and how to prevent it.
Anybody wants to eat this? This is available on the web, uh, social media. Yeah, it will be on YouTube channel. Um, I'm just making a record and uh, I first try this setup because we should be using Zoom and I want to try YouTube uh, just to store it already in the cloud. Yeah, I will share. I will share. If, if there is, uh, oh well, <laughs> good. I will share the link. But you can just uh, search it. Yeah, there are some videos. You're working on that. Thank <laughs> you. 
We have someone with us who is very dear to Toastmasters, and she mentioned that if she had the money, she would work on all charity projects that she has in mind, travel, and have all the experiences that she wanted to have. That needs a lot of money. She will also be working as a wellness and transformational coach because that's her passion. The typical day would be waking up, spiritual practice, exercise, breakfast, conduct private group sessions, check the state of the body started, and have new ones. Another meeting that would you definitely sounds like an action packed day, and she said the network doesn't keep worth growing as time goes by. Please help me welcome our table topics master today, Ghostmaster Mystery. Statement. 
money does grow on, on trees, but it's only for a few people. Mark Zuckerberg, <laughs> Steve Jobs, and the list is, is very small, by the way, for those for those who money grows on their trees. But there is this other segment of people also who have worked hard throughout their lives. And then they go into a garden and they see this very small tree and they wonder what kind of tree is this? And after a bit of research, they find out that money could grow on this tree. And then they start watering it, putting fertilizer, and lo and behold, money will grow on this tree for them. Maybe those masters would be a precursor for those people. And there is this third segment of people for whom money will grow in their garden. And those people are the ones who help others. Mother Teresa had a huge tree with money falling over those whom she helped. What kind of tree would you like to have? Back to you, sir. Thank you, distinguished Toastmaster, Colonel Murat, for this uh, articulate speech. On to our next question. I would like to call Toastmaster Mafaza. Your question would be, if you could have all the money you dream of, how much would that be, and what would you do with that money? Uh, good evening, everybody. So the today's question, if you could have all the money you dream of, how much would that be, and what will you do, what will you do with that money? So the dream which I have regarding in terms of amount of the money that I have is related to the people whom I want to give. So this is something that every day I urge to earn more money, just not only to build myself. If it is for myself only, I will always have a target. Okay, this is what my dream, this is the car I need, this is the, the relative I have for these people, this much money I need. But when it comes to me, because this is something, a personal uh, question. If I want to have a dream, so I dream of all the poor people in all over the world. For example, Kenya, South Africa, Gaza, these people need money. But I don't know where are all those rich people having those money, not spending to them. But I wanted to have more and more money without any limitation because poor and uh, Sick people are having unlimited number of people are in their world. So to help them, limit money is not enough. So I need unlimited money uh, to help unlimited number of people all over the world who is suffering. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Mafaza. On to our next question, I would like to call Toastmaster Siraj. And the question for you is, do you believe that money can buy happiness? Masters and yes, here the topic is money and happiness. I believe that that depends on people. So 
money always cannot bring the happiness what i believe but sometimes for our what is a short term happiness money is enough it will not stay longer for longer it's something else the man means if we accustom to something or if we stay on longer times in something else we will get bored and it will not make us the happiness so more than money i think if we have more money if you start spending on what just before one of our dogmas was said on spending on poor people or needy or who need that in a rare situations so if we spend that will make us the happiness and there we can find what is actually the life what is the uh, real value of life we can understand from that thank you thank you all. thank you to smart siraj and for our next question i would like to call guest kushbu So the question is money is the root of all evil of all evil i believe everyone here is familiar with this expression so is the love of money the root of all evil or the lack of money is the root of all evil which one do you believe in good evening everyone thank you so much for this opportunity Well, I believe I think uh, when we talk about money, first we need to understand that what kind of relationship we share with money, and how do we see as money. So, if I see in terms of love as something that is lacking, uh, I would choose maybe you know like love because uh, sometimes because the love needs to uh, needs to insanity because that's how like you know our society teaches us that to go like to. to be to see success in terms of having more financial wealth and for that like this craze this insanity happens which results in making some unconscious choices that is not just to have an impact on yourself but the people around you so i believe that uh, love for money can actually uh, distract you from the real happiness that that comes from within so i think that uh, takes us away from the uh, from that from the sense of gratitude for what you have and for, for what you don't have so thank you thank you kushbu and for our last question i would like to call guest prabhakar so the question is can money buy love Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, today is my first day in uh, Toastmaster, and uh, probably I'm speaking for the first time in front of uh, this group or gathering. Um, topic is can money buy love? Now this is very tricky question. <laughs> As we all know, we heard from before that uh, love is beyond everything. Money can't buy love. Okay. But here the question is: Can when uh, when we think uh, practically, yes, money is important for love. Actually, if you see, uh, I I can give an example of a marriage. Okay, if you want to marry someone, what you see in other person, like if you see the how is his earning, how is his status, does he is able to take care of your daughter or your sister or anything? So. yeah obviously money does matter in those cases and uh, sometimes we see that love marriages do happen it is purely because of love but once they come into the reality of uh, of, of life then we see that the love fades away and the uh, and, and, and the marriages and the divorces and these things happen so i feel that money is essential and it is important for anything to be uh, sustainable and uh, to to grow uh, so that's that's my point thank, thank you 
Thank you, Professor. And I hope that um, some of these questions might have triggered some deep introspection for each one of you. You can take your own time to meditate or maybe try to understand your beliefs about the questions we have about money. And I'll give back the floor to Toastmaster of the Day, Sandeep. Round of applause for all of our speakers. Thank you, Ghostmaster Machine, for the wonderful topics. The usual applause for Ghostmaster Machine for the wonderful session. I now request the diamond to please present his report for the table copy session. Thank you, Ghostmaster Sandeep. Uh, some of the name I don't know, uh, I will call Speaker 1 has taken 2 minutes, 8 seconds. Speaker 2 has taken 1 minute, 12 seconds. Speaker 3. Three Toastmaster Siraj has taken one minute thirty seconds. So you can you can give us that again with the names, so you can mention speaker one. Uh, Who's speaker one? Uh, Toastmaster Kanan uh, Murad. He has taken two minute eight seconds. Okay, nice. Speaker two. Your name, ma'am. Mafaza. Mafaza. Toastmaster Mafaza. One minute twelve seconds. Okay. So speaker three, Siraj. Has taken one minute thirty seconds. Speaker four has taken one minute nine seconds. Okay. Speaker five, one minute thirty seconds. Speaker five is Prabhakar. Those past Prabhakar. Yes, Prabhakar. Yes, Prabhakar. Yes, Prabhakar. So uh, everybody is qualifying for this. Brilliant. Thank you, Toastmaster Rashid. So everybody qualifies. Please uh, cast your vote for the best table topic speaker. Already is in the group, WhatsApp group. Okay, but yes, can vote for this as well. So if you can just give the uh, the number. Same six one two nine. So uh, yes, can log on as well. Six one two Perfect. Thank you so much. Can I request everybody to please pass their vote? For the best table of his team. As the votes are being done, as we speak, all right. Groups, can we all come together for the next activity? Right, all of you together for the next activity? You all need to discuss through this one. And uh, I would request all of you to log on to me. Choose one phone in your group and log on to kahoot.it. That's K A H double O T dot I D. So I think come together as a group, pick up one person who will take charge of the phone and log on to kahoot.it. I will just be trying to see if I can set this up again in a bit. Uh, technical difficulties for this one. So we don't get away, it comes over here, so it becomes easier for everybody to participate and do it with you. All right. On that note, we want evaluations, and uh, we'll fix this up in the meanwhile. So evaluation segment is again a segment where we have the evaluators evaluating the individual speakers, and uh, each speaker has an evaluator where they come and give feedback on stage on how things can be done better, as well as things that went right. So our first evaluator for today has been a Toastmasters almost 20 plus years. His net worth, he mentions, is almost $500 million. And if he says if he's given $100 million, what would his average need to pay be like? He says he can't do whatever he's doing currently, but do it 1,000 times bigger, and also do a lot of new stuff, which he always wanted to do. His average day would be more relaxing than what it is right now, and the day will start and end in a different country and a different city each month. It's quite interesting. So you pick one city, one country every single month, and then move on. Please have you welcome to the huge round of applause, our evaluator number one, Toastmaster Mimi Menon.
Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. My speaker today was Mirza. He was doing his right trick speech. Uh, the objectives I already read out earlier. You're aware of it. I like the way the speaker started the meet with this speech with an interaction with the audience by asking a question. That's always a very nice way to start the speech. I saw him being quite humorous. Yeah, he was trying to be humorous, and that's a talent that he specifically has, and he can build on that. Wonderful confidence uh, as a speaker. The pace of delivery was quite decent. I mean, we could. He was not going too fast, not going too slow, yeah, and we could, and very clear and legible language, words, so everybody could listen to him very well. In fact, he had gestures, uh, sorry, the eye contact worked. Uh, he was walking around looking at the audience from different areas of the stage. Um, he was quite comfortable with the stage, I would say, although it was being his first speech, but he seemed very comfortable. Close with the with the message towards the end, uh, which is you need to really work hard to make money and be rich. So that was good. Now, if I were to give him some suggestions on what he could have done better, even in this first speech, um, <clears throat> first and foremost, it's not his fault. But if there could have been a color mic instead of a hand mic, that would have been better. Yeah. So even his gestures, you know, it, he could use only one hand because with one hand. Was busy with the mic. So next time, any speaker, yeah, try to use a power mic. The other suggestion is about uh, walking while speaking. So he had this tendency to to walk while he was speaking, and that can be reduced. It's not possible to kind of remove it completely. You will still walk a bit at times, but we call it purposeful walking. So when you walk, there has to be some purpose behind why you are going this side or why you are going there or why you are coming to the middle. So that's something that the speaker can work on. Um, I got to know about the speaker's background, what he's doing currently. I would have loved him to tell us a bit more about his future vision. Like what does he want to do in the future going forward? You know? And that is something which probably could have been elaborated a bit. Um, it would have been interesting for me to listen to. I think the speech was done well, Toastmaster Mirza. And in conclusion, I would say that with the kind of passion and confidence and the cornucopia of talent that you carry within you, you are going to be rich, very rich. And when I say rich, I just don't mean cash or money. Yeah? Over to you, Toastmaster. Thank you, Toastmaster Vivi, for the insightful evaluation. We now move on to evaluator number two. She's been in Toastmasters for the last three years, and she said if she gets a million, hundred million dollars, her day would be spent riding a bike around the world and run an organization remotely. So please help me welcome to evaluator number two, Toastmaster Nora Alpizasi. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate our uh, speaker, uh, Toastmaster Ibrahim, for his uh, first speech, his icebreaker. Uh, I was quite impressed, really. I thought that you didn't have all these abilities that how you spoke with us today. So, for that, uh, we would like to see more of you on the stage. Um, so, with there, we can see that you had a very good eloquent way of speaking and had a very good storytelling kind of way of saying your story. So, you began from way back uh, in your childhood and how you were comfortable and shy and how you used the energy of that and called it a disease. Uh, it's quite interesting because uh, being comfortable could be a disease that stops you from growing and you want to... Please request all members to cast their vote for the best evaluator. Please all members cast your vote for the best evaluator.
my name is Andy Zapp in the system. Uh, I believe everybody is casting their most already for the best evaluator. That's all getting the teams again. We're running the game pin. 20 seconds for each question, so make sure that the game pin is 916-335. If I can ask all teams to start logging in again and let go once they're in. The game pin is 916 double three five. Three is in. Are we all ready? Are visible from the back? All right. So there goes your first question. All right. Twenty seconds to answer. It, so it goes up pretty quickly. Okay. So what's the first thing he has got first Sandeep will do if he wins a lot of Two more teams to answer. Okay, one thing is spending with each other answer now. Okay, done. Alright, so I'll try to ask Vegas if you know someone in the city. That's <laughs> <laughs> Alright, ready for the next one? Alright, question. Okay, team 3 is reading the scoreboard with 806 points. Okay, true or false question? First person really believes in blowing money over the ceiling. So it's true. Yeah. All right, team one is catching up. All right, team three is still leading. You got three more questions to go. Next question. The first base Toastmaster and Nisha would travel to with tons of money. She makes that money. That means that they're telling the money to go to the camera, to the college, to the best camera, to the best camera. Alright, so do the answer to please. Scholarship is the right answer. Alright, team 2 is saving some grace. Team 1 is still going to catch up. Alright, guys, one last question to go. Toastmasters Adam will do this when he gets enough money. Fire Palace, you get Toastmasters 5 stars next. Fire Hell Card, one more to get. That also is the easiest one. But the one who pressed the button first would get the. Uh, so we have the podium. Team. Okay, so team one side second. And then. Team three. Team two is catching up. Team three is Yes. Yes. Alright, thank you everybody for participating. Thank you. Alright, uh, we move on now to the next segment, which is the, uh, we have the R counter report, the actual work reports. So the first one actually who comes up is the R counter. So the R counter is someone who's been in those courses for the last two months, and if he gets manipulated others, he will travel the world and invest in health. We would not want to change this theory any much. Please let me welcome Toastmaster Ranesh. Hello, good evening everyone. Uh, good evening fellow Toastmasters and guests. Uh, today, we are fortunate enough to have a cornucopia of ideas on how to make money, additional money maybe, for the people who are making enough. So, uh, my role today is to is of the R counter. The purpose of the R counter is to note the words and sounds that are used as phosphorus. So I'll go through the list. President DB has only used a phosphorus once. World Master uh, for the day, Misha has used the uh, phosphorus more than five times. Postmaster of the day, Sandeep has used it 
four times here. Yeah? Mirza has used it only three times, being his icebreaker, uh, icebreaker speech, which is very good. He has been using the and word more often, that is what I have noticed while taking notes. Uh, speaker 2, Mr. Ibrahim has used it again only three times. Bosco has used it more than five times. Evaluator B.P. Nehrun has used it five times. Nora has used it more than five times. And uh, Mr. Robert has got me confused by evaluating the R's and the O's. But <laughs> then it's still. That's it. Thank you, Dostmaster Rakesh, for the detailed report. We now go on to the World Masters report. Uh, Dostmaster Misha will let us know how many times the World of the Day called the Kopia was used. Dostmaster Misha. Thank you, Dostmaster of the Day. I have a question for you, fellow Dostmasters. What was the word of the day today? Yeah. I can hear. Can you tell it? Out of love! <laughs> Super, thank you so much. Does anyone know how many of you today? Yes. How, how many people in the room? Yes. How many? 20, 30. 30, 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. And to the Dostmaster Rajesh. Thank you. Thank you, Dostmaster Misha. We now move on to the remaining. I didn't miss out this at the start. We have a to be so ago. So I had to be or I needed to be. And uh, communications, usually communication itself is a plural form, so communication is fine. I came from so and so place. Uh, the better. Uses I come from because you always come from a that is not going to change. So you can use I come from until I finalized my degree, until I finished my degree. I succeed in the job. I succeed that it's just a correction regarding the tenses, and it is not in the state, it is on the state. Until I receive a call, could be until I received. The call. I burst out like laughing. I bursted out laughing. Till that time, it could be until then. Who was coming late every time? Could be who used to be late always. That's it. Thank you. And maybe I would have missed some of the good usages. If you could point out, please uh, let me know. Thank you very much. And to Bob, if you could share that phone in the group, that would be nice. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rashmi. And again, big round of applause to Mr. Rashmi for the event we last week. All right. So, one more activity before we move on to the general evaluation. Rooms. The first one to come up on stage and give me five wallets. Five wallets. First team, come up. Five, five, five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 that was a sort of a uh, okay. oh, So that's group one, right? Group one. Uh, it's great one as well. <laughs> yeah, I don't, uh, I mean, I think almost, uh, almost on the floor there. All right, we now move on to our general evaluation segment. There's always uh, one person in the meeting who has a bird's eye view for the entire meeting, what happens, and, and there's always suggestions for improvement, as well as what went right and what went wrong. Uh, this gentleman has been in Toastmasters for the last 10 years, a very fresh member of the White Toastmasters. When asked what is the network, he said it's invaluable, which is quite appropriate. And he also mentioned if, if he gets $100 million, what would he do? He said, I would not live in Greenland. <laughs> Please have you welcome First Master Hari Adan for the general manager. Thank you, Master Hari 
This would only presentation plus two. Just one second, guess, we shall have a good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Audible? Audible? Yes. Uh, that's a test for my throat. Anyways, good. So, most important is, is in fact, I, I just told PTM Karmala that about nine years ago when I walked into this room, it was the first time when I came in for a Tall Tales contest. It was my dream to be a member of the Dubai Toastmasters Club, but time rolled on and it took me 10 years to get here. So thank you very much for having me as a member because every Toastmasters Club has got the rights to send out a member if they do not like the members. Thank you very much for accepting me and becoming making me a part of the family. Having said that, it's, it's, it, this club has got a cornucopia of experience, 26 years of existence in Toastmasters, that itself is, is testimony of the amount of quality that you bring into the fraternity. And that's why Toastmasters from, from Dubai Toastmasters Club are looked up to when it comes to any form of contest or any form of degree check in terms of quality. The meeting here as well is a very clear litmus test to where we stand. Reasons three. First of all, I saw the activity in the group. It's a live group. I'm a member with, I told TTM Gangmara that I was a member with nine clubs last year. I'm still a member of four clubs. And I can tell you, three of the groups are near dead. That's number one. That shows comrade. One of the things that I love in this club is comrade. Second, beautifully done is you had the agenda come out well in advance. I saw there was confusion, that's okay. But having the ag agenda come out in time shows that the club is serious about the meeting. Third is the energy level in the room. You should give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Reason being that if you go to other club meetings, I can tell you sometimes it is graveyard shifts. <laughs> I'm serious. You don't have a graveyard shift here. It feels like an early morning shift. Or not on definitely a Monday, but definitely a Friday. <laughs> or that's that's when we are ending, ending the week, right? So good. Now having said that, how did we perform in the meeting? So we had the Sergeant and all, she came and started off with the meeting. I will not get into the timing, because timing is something that we can always work on as a group. But I'll go individually. So, we had the Sergeant at Arms, he came and opened up the meeting, beautifully done, he had a beautiful message to give us. Hard for a Sergeant at Arms to give a message in every speech. But this is the message that I would like to give the Sergeant at Arms. You're going to be speaking here for five minutes, draft a good speech. Because even your speech can be designed. You had a beautiful message, try and weave the entire concept of what a Sergeant at Arms is going to be speaking around that particular message. So let me give you an example. You said that you come into a Toastmasters meeting to learn something in your life because here is where we exchange and we give feedback. In Toastmasters, how do we learn? Do a little bit of life. So let's, let's see. One of the biggest distractions in learning is your mobile phones. So I may request you to keep them on. You can actually weave it into your speech. That's one you can do. In terms of one thing that I missed out was, I thought the Sergeant Adam Sergeant should also give us one requirement that the civil defense, in case there is a fire alarm, there is no fire drill announced, exits. Important one. Please keep in mind. Because we are doing a face to face meeting. The online meeting has to be. Second, we had the word master. I must tell you, thank you so much for that word. Cornucopia. Amazing word. I've read it in one of the books. It took me a while to come to that and then brushing off memory and then it lit up. Word is difficult to be used, however can be used. Now having said that, one thing that I liked about what you did was you had an image. Pictures speak a thousand words. Beautifully done. What I would have expected to do next was try and throw the synonyms and antonyms. Don't you do it. Put us on the block. Put us, let the heat get on to us, let our brains start functioning. Give us the antonyms and synonyms, then play with us a little. Jumble up the word, if you're good at 
PowerPoint, jumble it up, try, and then give the word. So you're getting our brains to work those gray cells to shake it up, and then maybe you get the word at times. How to done that if I win? Toastmaster of the day, my, my friend Sandeep Arnani, I'll come to you live at the end. We had the, uh, we had the speakers. I must tell you this, all three are icebreaker speeches. I was live at an event in 1993. And I saw a speaker fall dead after he finished his nine minute speech. And that speaker happened to be my father's best friend. Every time you take that call to give a speech, congratulate yourself because you're just countering the second most feared item after ghosts. <laughs> so you are encountering it, you're coming face to face with it. Therefore, if you're giving a speech, believe me, you're doing a million goods to yourself. There cannot be more. I, I don't know the number that you can put towards yourself. <laughs> so, I spread the speech speakers. Congratulations, as Confucius rightly said. What is that? About a journey. Uh, journey a, thousand miles. a journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. Congratulate yourself, and I think you should give them a round of applause. Can I say the topics, Master? I must tell you that the topics were as gorgeous as you are, <laughs> because the reason is simple. You didn't get anybody to... <laughs> <laughs> Nobody froze, so you did a good job. Simple topics, easy to understand, but it's real life. What would I have done differently was, I wouldn't have displayed the topics. I would carry it in chicks and read it out in contest style. So if I were you, I would have said, TDM Kanumura, topic for you, money grows on trees. Money grows on trees, TDM Kanumura. Why am I saying this? Because that's a contest time. That's the only reason. Not a In a contest, you can't see the topic. And keep the topic short. I saw a long one. So I was wondering, is it a compos composition or is it a <laughs> tabletop? So otherwise, good. Otherwise, brilliant joke. My friend, thank you so much. You got us to earn money, even though it was imaginary. He has not changed a bit. <laughs> <laughs> he has not changed a bit. I can tell you if you have compensated on time or the agenda, agenda it is because of your speed of speaking. One of the best things about Sandeep is he keeps the thing interactive. You've seen this. I have not gone to a TMOD session in a long time where an activity has been brilliantly done by him. You may have had issues with the contraptions, and I was just telling Costco, when everything can go wrong, it is usually IT, it for me, that can go wrong. And that's what happens. So no problems, it's okay. But you gathered yourself well, you got us to do a brilliant job. What's brilliant about this, this entire TMOD session is we didn't sit in one place and just keep listening and listening and listening. No. He got us to do an activity. For any TMOD who's going to take up this road, this is your challenge. Sandeep, if I were you, I would have done just one thing. I would have tried to knit the entire TMOD into your message that you started first. The question that you asked us, how, do, how can you earn more money? I said, first, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to earn one more money, you need to learn something new. In Toastmasters, we learn something new, and that is the word of the day. And then start from there. That could have also helped. Then when you said prepared speeches, I would prepare something so that I can learn, learn more money. So you bring in the prepared element. How did I perform? I need to sit and look at my accounts. So basically, you have evaluation. All in all, I love my I love my meeting today. It's been a long time. It's only the second meeting I've attended in three years, face to face. I came to this club thanks to TV, thanks to all of you. And I'm looking up to DTM Karl Murad, DTM Menon, whom I know for the last four, 10 years. I look up to all of you all for learning. 
Thank you very much, and what is your question? Thank you, Mr. Parivar, for the wonderful evaluation. Charismatic as always. We now request all members to cast their vote for the best role player for today. Uh, if you can log on to Nike.com and cast your vote for the best role player. are being conducted as well. Uh, we had silent role players today that actually made the meeting possible and it would be uh, incredible not to mention their names. So we have our shoot master, Dose Master Kaida. Please give him a huge round of applause. <laughs> our big master for today was Dose Master Rashid. <laughs> and the one who was running around most of the time was our silent one, Dose Master Salah. Thank you to all of you for supporting the meeting. We now move on to the uh, next part of the meeting, which is the budget presentation. Uh, and for that, I'd like to call Toastmaster, who's been, uh, he's been with us for the last one year. And uh, when asked, what would you do with $100 million and what would a day be like? He said, build a chain of supermarkets like Guru. 12.3% of it in down to employees, families, and workers, 30% to me, and rest to the investors. A very clear cut plan. He said, I would wake up at 4 a.m., first three hours with God, rituals, and deep connection, then from 7 a.m. till sunset with work, helping and growing the rest of the family. One day a week is me time. Very clear plan. Please help me welcome to the new drama class, Toastmaster Adi. And I owe you something which I didn't give you the previous round. I will try to make uh, a very boring subject <laughs> numbers, spreadsheets. I try to make it a bit fun as much as I can. But the number was here. Till uh, our president fixed the presentation. So, okay. So, tell me, fix the technology matter. I'll tell you a little bit about the construction of our topic today, which we will spend together 15 minutes approximately, to explain to you where your membership fees goes, and also for the our guests to understand the fees structure, to understand how we spend the money. This is a non-profit organization, and we are concerned. We are very skeptical, very conscious about the spending, where the money goes, and we want a very uh, detailed. Uh, forecast and plan and conscious plans. Today we'll discuss together the annual budget for the White Post Master Club. This is the content. We will start with the first topic, which is the handover from the previous XCOM. What was the amount received from them in cash? How was it distributed? Then we will talk about the members and membership fees. How many members do we have? Active members in the club as of today. Actually, today we have four members joined in this session. And this is the first time I witnessed that, maybe because I'm in the Persian. Uh, the third topic is assumptions. What we put assumptions based in the budget for this year, for this, the course of this year. And the fourth subject is the revenue structure, how we are expecting to, re to receive the revenue from the different streams. The fifth is the expenses, how we are going to spend the money. 
and last is the balance that we intend to hand over to the next XCOM, which will be appointed in next year, July. So for the guests or for the new members, you're lucky because you just catch it on the right side. For me, it took about four months to understand all this stuff. I was completely ignorant about it last year because I joined a month after this presentation. So I took perhaps four months to understand how this is structured. So you will, you will, hopefully that will be very helpful. So uh, in May, we start the conversation about the budget, the handover. By June, July, we get this handover from the previous treasurer. We received 25,039 dirhams and 24 plus. And it was distributed as a kind of risk mitigation to a number of members of the ex-com members and the last immediate president of the club. And that was the distribution. And I received that amount of cash, which is mentioned there in the, uh, in the slide. Now we talk about the members, right? Before this meeting, when I checked the club center on the online portal of those master international club, we have 53 paid and active members still today. Our, if you can see in the schedule, we put the five type of membership, and I think it's been communicated earlier by the president, but this is a very a brief and simple slide, if you can make a, a capture, or I can share it on the WhatsApp to you. The assumptions, based on what we build the budget. It's very conservative numbers. When we set 24 members to join uh, for a six-month membership, this is a very conservative number where we, we could get more members to join the club. But we set it to make sure that we are in the right place. We are expecting to get 35 annual renewal from the 53 active members. And 10 of them will only renew for six months. Maybe they will be traveling, maybe the club. So we already did that in the XCOM discussion. And we are expecting to have four paid guests every session. Today we have five guests paid, there, and I think there are a few guests they didn't pay, so we'll catch them before. <laughs> <laughs> the revenue. The revenue, we, as build assumptions that I explained it earlier, expecting from the 24 new members that they will join during the course of the year, we're expecting to receive the 12, uh, 10,800, which is a six month membership for 24 members. And to have the 75 terms of each new six month new member as a registration fee. We also expect to receive 30,750 from the 35 renewals, one year renewals, like the distinguished Toastmasters and the uh, Toastmasters that have been in the club for the past one year and more, they all perhaps will, will renew, most likely they will renew. The other income, we have uh, shared assets with other clubs that we pay fully, and we share with them the access so they pay percentage, so that's another feature. So the total income is 69,964. That's include the amount we received from the previous exco, which I displayed in the first slide. Total, 69,964 dollars. This is boring, right? <laughs> I can't, I can't help it. I, I'll try, I'll try to. Now maybe now in this expenses, we might touch some few points about the celebrations, trophies, that will trigger your imagination. Perhaps. All right. So the expenses first, 
the biggest chunk of the expenses is goes to Toastmaster International, which is the membership uh, bank. We have to pay to uh, Toastmaster International for each member enrollment. Also, we have access to the pathways and the other benefits of the uh, online uh, portal. And the new members uh, registration also, that's part of the or the first time members, joiners, we have to pay their registration fees. The other expenses, which is about this one, that's also the second, perhaps, with all other, it's one, the second highest expenses. We pay 525 euros per session. So in the 24 sessions in a year, we're paying 12,600. For snacks and refreshment for the 24 meetings, our budget is 4,200. And we are paying for the trophies, certificates for the club compass, 776. Considering that we use also part of the inventory from the previous year, we have a few that could be used. The certificates from TMI, we order it online which is 704, and we have a special uh, event. We need to use about the meeting 725. There's a big thing that happened during that, and you can see that from the number. 5,000 dirham budget for that. Is, we will not announce what is that. I'll leave that to the president. And the anniversary, we put a budget of 1,000 dirham for activity during or activities during the anniversary. And for occasions, general occasions, Eid, Diwali, Ramadan, and Christmas, Valentine, we put a set of 900 dirhams budget. The other expenses is the online. We pay for Zoom, we pay for Canva, for the creative and, and what you see in the advertising. Uh, Meetup, which is for marketing, and for the website hosting and domain, all that together with the contingency, we put 2,500 dirham, and in total, other expenses are 4,000 dirham. So you can see the balance here. If we take the whole expenses, 49,296 deducted from the revenue expected, we will have 20,668 that our forecast, and it's conserved. We will try to work hard to make that number even higher, to hand it over to the next XCOM ex so they can run the club successfully. And that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> over to you, Professor Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sadi, for that wonderful and detailed report. Gives us a great insight of, uh, of the donation for the year. Uh, all right, and before I move on to my closure, I would like to call on Toastmaster Nisha to announce the results of which group actually made it to the top. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, let's cut the chase. Uh, so, any guesses who has won today's? Uh, team three. Team three. Team one. Team one. Okay, there was a close tie between two and group three, but we have a clear winner, and that is group three. Three! three. 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 Congratulations. Can we ask uh, team three to come on stage, please? All of you. Yeah, we are going to talk to you guys. So, what team three gets is a bunch of gold coins. Especially designed for uh, for their win. It's all it's all yours. Feel free to whatever you want to do with it. Uh, can we have? Gold coins. You can take the whole bottle. Yeah, it's all yours. Yeah, so hold it as a team. Okay, hold it as a team. One picture. Yeah. Did you have a plus for taking the lead on this one? Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, people. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it gold? 
Yes! Yes! <laughs> or an experience. But while money can't buy any of those things, it can make them more accessible. Is happiness not easier to achieve once you know the bills are all taken care of? Is happiness not easier to achieve when you are able to give a loved one something you know they deserve? At the very least, more money often equates to more choices in terms of how you want to spend your time. Whether that is with your loved ones or in chasing the passion you had as a kid. And even if you disagree with everything we just said, in order to change the world, you will still need the backing of financial capital. Now, with that said, and hopefully having navigated through the awkwardness of introducing such a topic, let's cut right to the chase. How much money should you be making? How much is enough? And, mind you, there's a very good reason to ask such a question. This is not just for curiosity's sake. Studies show that when you have actually put a metric to a goal, and maybe even written it down, you are more likely to achieve it. People who vividly picture a goal are 40% more likely to successfully achieve it. So, how much? What does the literature say? Well, the relationship of money and happiness is a complicated one. First of all, emotions are generally hard to track. And second of all, this question has not been researched all that much. However, anyone talking about this topic has to bring up a piece of literature from 2010, authored by Daniel Kahneman and Angus Dean. The paper looks into the relationship between income and happiness, but it goes a bit beyond that. The authors decided that simply looking into one metric as a measure of subjective well-being would fail to capture the complete picture and confound the findings. So they looked at two things. Emotional well-being, which is defined as the day-to-day -day satisfaction, and life evaluation, defined as the thoughts that come to mind when one thinks of life as a whole. You can also think of emotional well-being as the sort of short-term happiness, and life evaluation as the long-term happiness. Now, what did the research find? It turns out, life evaluation rises steadily with income. The more people earn, the more positively they tend to think of life in general. Emotional well-being, on the other hand, seems to plateau after an annual income of around 75000 meaning till that figure, for the majority of people, each bit of raise in income will feel great. But after it, your day-to-day -day happiness won't go up by that much. So, there it is, right? That's the magical number. Well, not quite. On the side of that, I'll send the entire video across to you on the uh, WhatsApp group. It's quite an interesting one, it gives you a lot of perspective. Uh, my suggestion is don't just see it once, see it twice, see it thrice, and you'll get the crux of exactly what this is talking about. So sometimes it's not just about money, it's about emotional happiness, emotional well-being, what you want to see with the long-term long happiness, and those are quite interesting intrinsic things. So I'll give you all with a quote. It says there's a gigantic difference between earning a great deal of money and being rich. So my message to all of you is try and be rich. On that note, this is your TMO signing off. We now hand over the stage to a lady who's been in those buses for the last one year and nine months. And when she said, what would you do with $100 million? She said, you would use it as a part of lifelong free membership to all DDC members. So we have a second one planning for it. Live in a posh house and shop and dine every single day. Please help me welcome those buses to the other one. Thank you so much, Toastmaster of the Day, Toastmaster Sandeep. He needs a big round of applause. <laughs> Such an interactive and lively, totally fun session we had, right? Yes. yes. Can I have just two guests to give us feedback? Provocative. Just a few seconds, give us, tell us what did you think about the meeting? Uh, it was my first meeting and uh, I really liked the interaction and knowing the people and how the things actually we spent two hours. I didn't feel that I spent two hours actually. It was very engaging and uh, I really liked it and uh, I joined already. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was a part of uh, an intro's masters, uh, Delhi, and I would tell you that uh, this is the most interactive toastmaster session I've ever had. Uh, 
just take care of samosas. So, <laughs> so yeah, this is the you know, I'm looking forward to the next week. So you're also we are also a fun member, right? Thank you so much. Let's quickly move to the awards and the achievements. The best role player goes to the new baby of our club. Distinguished Toastmaster Master Hari Haran Ayer for his journey. Yeah. I prefer close-ups. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the DM only. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Our next award for the best table topic speaker goes to the oldest member now, distinguished Toastmaster Kazan Bura. Evaluator goes to another oldest member. Well, it's just even close to us to be seen. Okay, I think I can be getting the call. Okay, so congratulations to him. And finally, the best speaker. This was a tough one. Any guesses? This goes to my mentee, Toastmaster Mirza Dhanel. Congratulations. Congratulations. for the picture. Okay, next, let's congratulate our first timers today who've been doing the role for the first time. That is Toastmaster Nasreen for doing the Toastmaster for the first time. Maybe uh, E. Nisha is sitting over there. You can all submit your nominations to her for the Toy Tale Contest, which is going to be held on 12th September. We are planning a get together end of September 2022. So we will discuss and send your Google form on the dates which are convenient for you all. This will be an outdoor activity, depending on the weather or some indoor. We will seek your feedback. But keep, mark your calendars for around the end of uh, September for a get together. Okay, so now this is a very important aspect that we wanted to speak about. We've seen that given the location and given the timings of the meeting, we see a lot of people coming in a bit late, like seen today also. The meeting started around 6.45, we started two minutes late, 6.47, but people were coming after 7, missing the enthusiastic sergeant at arms and my opening. So we have decided, you know, based on the member, we want to have a, a discussion on whether we should change the timings to 7.15. And for that, I'd like to invite Toastmaster Bosco to moderate this session, the business session on uh, whether we would change the timings to 7.15 or no. So let me hand over to Toastmaster Bosco. Good evening, Mr. Uh, I am here to uh, just as a facilitator uh, for this session. Uh, as uh, our president pointed out, this is about the timing. Okay, uh, we we are meeting right now at six forty-five, and uh, the XCOM has had a discussion, and they are proposing to change the starting time to seven fifty. Nothing to do with Sandeep coming here. Okay. <laughs> so, to start this, I would like to ask, Secretary is not available, so one person of the XCOM to uh, ensure if that we have met the quorum today. Sagar at arms can ensure that we have met the quorum for the meeting today. We need 50 plus, 50 percent plus one. 
Do we have a forum to conduct this discussion? We have 28 members. We have 28 members. Thank you. So we have a forum to conduct this discussion. And uh, from the expert, someone would like to propose this uh, uh, motion. Someone has to say, I propose to start the meeting at 7.15. I propose to start meetings at 7.15. Thank you, Toastmaster Misha. And uh, anyone to second this motion? I second this motion. Thank you, Toastmaster Rashmi. So uh, we take it up for discussion. And uh, before uh, we proceed, uh, we open the floor for discussion about this uh, topic. So I would like to invite two people to uh, speak uh, for changing the time to 7.15 and two people to speak for continuing with the time, 6.45. So each person can speak for 30 minutes. So who would like to go second. Second. Sorry, 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I would like to invite the first person who would like to, uh, Postmaster Misha. This one question. Uh, can, what question? What would be the ending time? Uh, it will be like the six, uh, the, the meeting structure will not change. So two and a half hours is our normal meeting time. So that will be if we start at uh, seven fifteen, we finish after two and a half. Nine forty-five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So can you time thirty seconds for him to finish his speech? Uh, Dear members, fellow Ghostmasters, uh, I'd like to start meeting uh, like the like 7.15 because uh, usually 6.45, after the 6, it's a rush time, it's a huge traffic jam around this area also. I'm driving from uh, um, Blue Waters, it's um, around GBR, Marina, and uh, usually I start with traffic two times, first on the Sheikh Road, the second, uh, close to this area. Uh, people going home and usually uh, we start here. Uh, now we'd like to call upon someone who would like to continue with 6.45. Please. Toastmaster Party. Good morning, man. Yeah, I'm living just near to my airport, <laughs> so I wanted to continue at 6.45, it's just five minutes from my home. Thank you. Okay. I would like to invite someone to speak uh, for shifting the time to 7.15. Anyone? Please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am in favor of uh, starting at 7.15 uh, for the specific reason that we need to start on time and finish on time. Now, I am in favor of that if the XCOM could promise me that we will be finishing at 9.45 and not 10 and 10.15, because it's important for us to start on time and it's important for the role players to be here on time so that we don't have this confusion within the session itself or changing roles and so on. Okay, the last person who would like to continue with 6.45. Anyone who would like to come forward and speak? <laughs> Anyone? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is, uh, I think historically as well, we have a lot to do in the DDC meeting. There's so much happening and there's so much of activities and events and things happening and announcements being made because we're such a humongous club and the things that we do. So I think that we always fall short of time with what needs to be covered in a specific meeting. And I think for that specific reason, I think we should stick to uh, 6.45 and uh, obviously try and see if we can end at the end of finish line, but uh, in most cases, even in the post meeting, there's always a bit of a social gathering, chit chat, and everything else. So if you actually start at 7 15, finish at 9 25, 10, then that cuts out networking time as well post meeting. So I'm in favor of 6 45 as well. Now, uh, the discussion is closed. 
and uh, we will be going for the voting. Before going for voting, I just want to, uh, you know, uh, bring the context to this time. Uh, originally, before uh, five years, we used to meet at 7.15, okay? And we used to meet at al Training Center. Uh, and uh, we shifted from 7.15 to 6.45 for one particular reason. al Training Center used to close early. So if we start the meeting at 7.15, the management or the facility had a difficulty in closing down their facility. So that was the uh, issue we had. You were kicked out for quite a bit. Huh? You were kicked out for a bit. Yeah, <laughs> we had a lot of issues because of that. So uh, that was the context uh, why we shifted to 6. Again, we had a business meeting and we shifted it to 645. So now the things have changed. Okay, in that context, we are uh, proposing the uh, revision of time. So uh, now it is voting time. Uh, so we do the voting by show of hands. Okay, uh, how many of you would like to uh, shift the meeting from 6:45 to 7:15? Show of hands. Members only. Members only. This is only for the members. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve, and myself. My own is counted, or it should be later. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I am voting for it. So it is thirteen. Okay, so how many are the uh, twenty-eight? You need to ask the people who want to continue, and there are some people who might have stayed. Yeah. How many of you would like to continue uh, the meeting at six forty-five? Show of hands. One, two, three, four, five. So. Five. Again, uh, can I can I can I reconfirm? Uh, people who want to continue at six forty-five. Can I reconfirm? One, two, three, four, five, six. So uh, by the polls, uh, the majority members are in favor of shifting the time from six forty-five to seven fifteen. Uh, do we uh, pass the motion again for this? Yeah. The motion is passed. passed. Yes. Okay. So the motion is passed. <laughs> Can you pass? Okay. Now I would like to hand over uh, the stage to our president, Toastmaster Dean. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Bosco, for that. So our new timings are seven fifteen. And we as the XCOM will promise to finish it on time. Moving on, when we did the last MOT, one of the points that came out was the venue location. There was a number of people that said the venue location is not very convenient. So we as the XCOM are in the process of finding a new meeting location. And we are just waiting for all our members to come back from their vacation. And then we have identified two spots as of now. One is the Amarad Atrium on Business Bay. And one is the Dubai Mankul Library, which is like about Dubai. So once all the members are back from their vacation, we have a full strength. We will schedule two meetings around September, October. One in uh, Emirat Atrium, one in Mankul Library. And we will conduct another business session similar to this. And we will go by what the majority of the members want. The members want to continue with their business.